commendable great uh sahir uh about this uh, unique uh, thing that you have done uh with uh, with the italian football player and this zero waste thing how you are bringing sustainability into your business model is amazing and uh, can you shed some light into how an uh, which is kind of running traditionally how they can bring sustainable practices into their business model like there are technologies that they can incorporate but since you have already started it like you you started with that uh, thing uh, and i believe it must be really helping your brand and how the uh, the the consumers are perceiving your brand so what are those one or two things that you would like to share uh, about how an existing business can bring uh, technology or use technology to make uh their business sustainable in the long run sure so i think there's kind of two parts to it right um one is our core belief as a business is that the future of the fashion industry the future of accessories is a uh, really going to be based on a foundational shift in mm-hmm. how the supply chain works it's right. not an incremental shift we're not talking about oh let's use the same you know engine and pour you know a different fuel into the engine and and the fuel is like you know sustainable fuel and suddenly like this engine is like you know dramatically more sustainable that's not how it works mm-hmm. and frankly that's a challenge that a lot of companies face right which mm-hmm. is that they have tremendous capex investments in uh the supply chain the way things work today mm-hmm. and uh to become sustainable is not as simple as oh now we use an organic material for sustainable that's actually not how it works because that's uh when you when you add it all up what is what it means to be sustainable you're not actually much more sustainable when you do something like that in fact you might even be less sustainable because by switching over to an organic fabric for example i'm just making this up um you actually may be generating more uh, co2 waste than you were using a uh, material that is not organic that's not in our view the way in which uh you know true sustainability is achieved it's yeah. uh frankly a gut renovation of the entire supply chain that results in sustainability for us what that means is we've aligned our business objectives with yeah. our sustainability objectives this yeah. is not to say that we built a business mm-hmm. and then we said oh how do we make it sustainable let's do this this and this and now our business is sustainable that's not how our business is built the way our business is built is we lose money if we make a product that doesn't get sold mm-hmm. it's that simple uh-huh. make each product we make costs us 10 times as much as it costs a traditional eyewear company to make it but mm-hmm. because of our business model mm-hmm. right that's okay because we don't have inventory we don't have warehousing mm-hmm. we remove all of these elements within mm-hmm. a traditional fashion and accessories business model that mm-hmm. in our view is inherently unnecessary because it's inherently not actually delivering value to the end consumer mm-hmm. what it's doing is it's creating business complexity that with advanced production technology and mm-hmm. advanced uh you know uh, basically a, a, an ad, ad, advanced uh, logistic system that's digitalized entirely you don't need so for us what that means is when you place an order as a customer you're creating a pull in our supply chain we're mm-hmm. not pushing a product on you you're pulling a product out of our supply chain that's been created for you mm-hmm. and this is powerful because not only does it mean for example that we don't produce waste when we make a product mm-hmm. it means we don't make a product that nobody buys mm-hmm. and as a result of that for mm-hmm. us to be carbon neutral is incredibly easy because mm-hmm. we don't have excess activities in our supply chain that mm-hmm. are producing carbon dioxide mm-hmm. that are unnecessary mm-hmm. and so for example we are li- zero impact across the board so that's waste that's uh, carbon dioxide that's mm-hmm. every single environmental factor that you could imagine and mm-hmm. that's not only at our like you know the front of the business that's the entire supply chain going mm-hmm. back to you know how literally the you know the, the raw material powder that's made that can, that's you know using laser technology turned into the end product that we make that mm-hmm. includes everything from curate, from cradle to the grave right? right and so when 
an existing business to answer your question, right? When an existing business wants to engage in a serious conversation around sustainability, mm -hmm. um, the honest answer is that you need to take a hard look at the way you do business today. And you need to be willing to engage in a serious, meaningful conversation about mm -hmm. how you're going to change the way you do business. Mm -hmm. If, you know, you talk about, oh, like, let's do a little bit of this and, you know, add this little thing on top or add that little thing on top. That's not sustainability. That's mm -hmm. marketing. And that's mm -hmm. fine. You know, that's great. I think that, yeah. you know, it's good to build awareness. And I think it's good for uh, consumers to become educated. Mm -hmm. But my, my like, you know, approach and, and my standpoint on this is, is, if you're, is if you're doing sustainability as a meaningful goal that actually is supposed to make a difference, mm -hmm. um, you've got to be willing to change the way you do things, not look for an easy way out. And I've had these conversations. There's lots and lots of companies out there that, you know, don't want to engage in that because it's hard. It's not that I think anybody has, you know, an intention against it. It's just really, really difficult. And so I think what it means is that brands need to take a stand, right, mm -hmm. around who they are and what they believe in. And mm -hmm they need to be willing to make meaningful changes. In, in our experience, what we found is that there are, you know, very powerful brands, whether they're individuals, like we, like, you know, today influencers are brands if they're big enough, right? In mm -hmm. and of themselves. Yeah. And there are people who, when you explain to them the biggest challenge that the fashion industry has today, right? which in, in, in our view, and, and there's like, you know, unfortunately not enough data on this. It's mm -hmm. the problem of pre-consumer waste, right? Mm -hmm. It is the problem of all the waste that's being created in supply chains that is ultimately not delivering value to the end consumer. Mm -hmm. When you engage in that conversation with brands and you engage in that conversation with people of influence, Paolo about is a great example, right? Mm -hmm. They see the world of fashion and they see the world uh, of, uh, you know, of, of supply chains when it comes to the products that they consume in a very, very different light. So and you, have a very, uh, a very, you need to have a very strong objective if like a business has to really kind mm -hmm. of get into that uh, mode of uh, bring, because it cannot be externally brought. It's kind of improving the things right from the very beginning. It has to be like, finding that balance right from the very beginning. So that's, that's a great point that you shared there. Amazing. Uh, uh,